Okay, hello everyone. Um, we'll start the session in a few minutes. Let's have uh, some more people joining in, I, I can see. Um, this session is going to be about some issues or some dilemmas we have in um, operational, um, security operationals in OT environment. Um, before I start, uh, I'd like to uh, have our uh, panelists introduce themselves. Um, we'll start with uh, Mr. Deto Hassan. Please introduce yourself. Hello to everybody. My name is Alberto Hassan. I am uh, in the last two years uh, ICL CISO. ICL is one of the companies with a lot of OT in Israel. And uh, before that, I was uh, many years in the, in the state uh, regulation. I was in the, uh, managing the national CERT for two years. And before it, I was in the ISA, Israeli Security Agency, and uh, afterward in the, in the directorate of Cyber Directorate. So I was about uh, more than 15 years in the state and in the last three, two years in private section. Okay, thank you. that's great. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Igal Gueta, please introduce yourself. Hi to everybody. Uh, Igal Gueta, I am the CEO of uh, SCADA Sudo. Um, I have 24, 10, 25 years of OT experience and 20 years in the cyber uh, arena. Uh, BSc in electric engineering, MSA in uh, business uh, management. Uh, one of the founders of the uh, Israeli uh, NIST, National Information Security Authority, in 2002, responsible for the guidance of the infrastructure uh, companies, uh, uh, critical infrastructure companies in Israel. Um, from 2008, um, delivering uh, cybersecurity uh, services in the uh, OT, uh, especially in the OT uh, operation technology arena to uh, multiple uh, companies uh, locally and globally uh, on the uh, critical infrastructure, industrial and uh, BMS building management systems. Um, operating uh, one of the, I believe the best teams uh, in the area on this uh, field with a lot of experience and uh, Hoping we are going, doing a good job. Great, thank you. And uh, Jamie, Jamie Wilkie, uh, Wilkie, sorry, please introduce yourself. I think you're on mute, Jamie. You're still on mute. That's going to be one of the best slogans of 2020. I can still see you on mute, Jamie. Thank you very much. I think you just removed, somebody removed my mute. I couldn't do it myself. Uh, so that was a good, a good example of how is it not, none of us are as in charge of our as a IT and OT environments as we would really like to be. So my name is Jamie Wilkie. I uh, work for as a Fujitsu, so a large as a Japanese, as a, as a IT, as a, as a SI, uh, in our enterprise as a cyber security as a division where I am responsible for developing our OT as a security as a portfolio. Um, an interesting challenge in its own right and an IT company as a teaching people what the engineering world as a, as a looks like. Uh, our, as a, as a purpose is to take a lot of the, the skills and the insights, which I think we're going to be talking about in the next few minutes, as a two customers who often, frankly, they, they don't know as a quite just how, how difficult and dangerous the world is that they are moving in uh, and just how exposed they are, particularly in the OT environment. So as I say, we want to as a, address that with consulting as a PS and managed services offering, so across the, the whole as a life cycle. Um, and a, a big part of that, which I think is interesting, is also looking at uh, acknowledging that no one player has all the answers here, but a lot of as a collaboration is as a necessary um, across as a skill sets and people who perhaps in the past have been avoiding each other and now need to work together. Thank you. Brilliant. So um, this is going to be kind of an open discussion on some of the issues that have been really uh, bothering me. I'll introduce myself very briefly. Um, Arani, um, 
biz dev in a company called Vertiflow. We specialize in ICS uh, security. And before that, I was many years in IT, in OT, in SOC, and so on. Um, I would, uh, one of the issues that I find very, I would say, uh, controversial or um, maybe in a conflict is whether or not to consolidate into one SOC uh, IT disciplines and OT disciplines. Can they work together in, in one SOC? Uh, can the platforms uh, be shared between uh, IT and OT. Um, so uh, let's start with uh, with you, uh, Mr. Hassan uh, Deto. Can you please give us your inputs on, on on that thought? I will say that this is an issue quite open. You can uh, begin with uh, uh, dividing two SOC, have an OT and an IT, but at the end of it, you will have to come with both of them together at the end of it. It can be in the first year or the second year, but when you, and I will explain, most of the attacks begin in the IT and goes to the OT. Um, there are very few attacks that begin directly in the OT. And you would like to have the, the whole picture when you are in charge of uh, the SOC. Well, but there are, any, there are problems. The problems are that most of the, you have different network most of the of the companies will have different network. Some of them will have uh, logic separation. Some of them physical separation, and uh, so you have a different Active Directory. So to to manage all of it together, it's not something that is simple. So you have to decide on the roadmap how to do it. And for example, let's say let's begin with uh, ideas. You spoke about ideas. You have different ideas in different plans. Uh, there is not an, an orchestra of ideas. Uh, they are different. So how you manage the information that you get from five ideas that you have in five plans. The same with, uh, with SIM. You have most of the plans, you will have a different SIM. And some of the cases, because of regulation, you will have different companies because one of the SIM is for, because of regulation is from one company and in other plans you have another company. So we, we, you can have uh, without names, two different SIMs companies. And so you have to put them together. And what about uh, guidance and training of the people that are looking on the screen and decide what to do? Uh, most, most of them are IT. But they, some of them, if you decide to, to, to compose them, you have that uh, the, the training will, will compose also OT and about decision. You have alert in the one of the plant, what you're doing, what the SOC is doing. So um, as I see it, it should be to one picture, but there is, a, there is a lot of steps. There are a lot of steps till you get to that, to that position you know, in planning, in uh, material, in uh, training and maintenance. Uh, for example, let's take uh, the alert from the scene. Some of the plans you will have a kind of configuration and other plans because of the situation of the plant, you will have, you will have different configuration. So how you merge all of it to one picture. So it's a project, let's say you have 10 plans and one IT network, okay? So we speak about that, that kind of magnitude. Not We do not speak about one plant and one IT. Then it's very easy. If you have a power plant, then it's easy. You have one power plant and one IT. To merge them, it's quite easy. But if you have five plants, 10 plants, or 20 plants, then to compose this, this picture is not so, so easy. But if I will refer to power plants or something that is one, definitely to do it from beginning as one picture, to see the IT and the OT in the same uh, the same SOC uh, room, of course, with the right training. The moment you get to five and ten plans, then it's not something easy to decide. You have to plan it, you have to design it, and you have to decide whether you are going to this roadmap because it's not easy to go there. OK, 
Okay, that's, that's very interesting. So what you're saying actually is the end game is a consolidated SOC. I see no other end, end game. Uh, if you are a CISO of a company, you have to see that the, 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 the whole picture in order to decide what to do. If you are managing the SOC, you want to see the whole picture. Of course, there are a lot of, uh, for example, regulation. Some regulation will not allow you to merge IT and OT. They will say to you, put di at a different side the OT and different side the IT. Uh, so not always you can decide by yourself. Sometimes it comes from regulation point of view, but if you will speak about responsibility as a company, you should go to one picture at the, in, the, in the end of the roadmap. That is my position. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Egan, what's your intake on this? Egan, you're on mute. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no. uh, first, of all, first of all, I must agree with uh, my colleague, uh, my friend, uh, Dato. I think he's uh, one of the few guys that have uh, real experience with these uh, things, uh, real life, hands-on experience. Um, I think I would like to look at it in more um, uh, from, from a top view and then go down. Uh, we need to uh, uh, take into account uh, people, technology and processes like in each uh, thing that we want to uh, construct uh, in, in a good manner and uh, the technologies in OT and IT are a little bit different. Uh, the impact of the technology of OT is different from the impact of the technology of IT. And uh, these things need to be very clear and very uh, well understood. Um, the, also the limitation of, all, of each technology. Uh, once you uh, need to uh, collect information from IT and OT, it's, uh, it's a different ball game, uh, especially when you're talking about um, um, systems that are uh, DCS and not just SCADA system, which are much more uh, time sensitive and um, the uh, operational uh, side is very, very uh, sensitive, very uh, uh, important. Um, if we look at the uh, human uh, side, the human skills needed uh, in OT, you need a very multidisciplinary uh, background in order to uh, operate and handle uh, a cyber incident. It's not enough to understand the rules of the firewall. It's not enough to understand how your website is working. You need to understand the operational uh, uh, plan, the, the, what they call the programmer, how the, the, the uh, critical infrastructure is working, or how the industrial plant is working, and how the PMS is working, and what happens in case of fire, what happens in case of a malfunction of uh, and as, um, if we talk in, on the Purdue uh, module, what goes on, on, on level zero on, on the sensors and actuators. You cannot deal with cyber incidents without understanding uh, really down to the bits what's going on there. So you need people that understand the process. You and can't that, just take... Igor, I agree with you. That's exactly the point. Where do you find such an animal? Uh, we need to go to uh, um, places where uh, we uh, can create uh, training uh, facilities that can train uh, people. And maybe it's your next question, but I believe that you have to take people from OT and train them, in, and train them on cyber, especially for the, 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 if somebody wants to uh, take an incident to understand what's happened. Uh, in the process level. Uh, of course, you will need the uh, analyst and, you, and we need people that will have to do the uh, reverse engineering of the code and understand what's going on. This is more on the IT side, but in order to understand what's the effect on the OT operational uh, process, you will need this. So I think that people 
I, I'm talking about myself. I didn't came from cyber. I came from the operation side. Uh, but soon enough, I went to, uh, to the cyber and to the uh, engineering uh, uh, part was just helping me. And I think it gave me a, a lot of advantages on any other people that went into this field. Because when I talk to engineers and, and I need to handle an incident, I know exactly how the, the, the process works. I know what to look for. I know what is wrong, why things don't work as they should. And uh, I've been working with most of the companies in Israel that uh, actually developed the uh, monitoring tools. And uh, this is the, the things that they will uh, struggle to, to, to understand what's going on in the system because it's not just looking on uh, somebody trying to go out to an internet uh, um, address or trying to do a sin attack or trying to change packets. Someone will change your, um, the behavior of the PLC on the uh, logic level. And you need to understand that somebody has now changed the logic on your PLC and changing logic on PC, meaning that you are changing the behavior of your system, total behavior of the system. And so uh, once you understand it and understand what should be and what should not, you can uh, um, understand the, the, the incident and understand if it's a malfunction. Egan, you refer to handling the, the event, but uh, before handling the event, uh, we speak about the SOC itself. The SOC itself, uh, it's more to, somebody has to raise the flag, raise the flag that there is something. And then there is the, the, the incident handling. This is, of course, uh, something very professional, like you, you, you and your company have this capability. But uh, speaking about SOC, I think that uh, as a first stage, thinking about the SOC as something unified, this is something that should be decided as a roadmap, because otherwise you will find yourself with in the same plant with two different SOC in which the, the same CISO is responsible for both of them and is uh, jumping from one to the other to see if there is any, any event when he would like to handle it. And if you will come to support them and to handle the event, for you also, it will be more difficult to investigate the moment it's two different rooms and don't forget it. Sometimes it's different building. One of them is one in the, in the IT building, the other one is the engineering building, which are different, different locations. Some of them could be one kilometer between them. And so we have to give a solution about how we look at this, the, the future SOC. And as I see it, uh, we should uh, go the roadmap, give the roadmap to one United SOC. And from you always I learn, of course, you are, you are a master, but uh, from handling the, the, the event is, is the next step to my evaluation, not, not uh, the first step. Right. I, I completely agree with you. Right. <laughs> I'd like to bring uh, J Jamie in. I mean, Jamie, you're, you're one of the largest SIs and MSPs in, in this field. Um, and, you know, uh, as we heard from our other panelists, um, there's a, a gap to be bridged in, in knowledge and training of, of this multidiscipline. Um, and a lot of companies do have problems of how to unify a SOC. I mean, how does uh, Fujitsu see this offering or this opportunity? Okay. Uh, well, I would certainly agree as a, with as a, as a both of you that uh, we need to move to a, to achieve a unified SOC. I mean, after all, ultimately, from a, an organization's point of view, they have their end-to-end -end as a business, as a processes, and the, the, the attack surface can as it can be anywhere. Um, you know, as we've as we've heard, it can start in IT, move to OT. It could even start in OT and move out as it to IT. It could be both at the same time. So, um, I think that. Uh, from from that point of view, it's it's absolutely necessary. Uh, also, from the, the we touched upon the responsibilities, uh, we would also encourage as uh, our customers to take a unified as approach to the responsibility as if for cybersecurity across IT and OT, because at some level it's the it's the same thing. Um, 
recognizing the caveats of, of, of certain as a regulations. Uh, just to, without wanting to, to repeat everything which I've, we've heard already, all I would maybe as an add is that we, we do see that customers struggle because even more than in their IT environments, in their OT environments, they have great engineering skills, but not really very many cyber skills. Uh, and they're often as a customers who aren't really as a keen to invest in that if they don't need to. Um, and who are therefore as a looking for the maximum efficiency as a cost relief and as of course as a level of cybersecurity as a, as a from a SOC, be it their own SOC or be it as a from a from a service provider as a like ourselves. And they're people who are going to be as a really pushing um, for us to in increase the efficiency of how we deliver cybersecurity. So for instance, if you look at a topic like as a SOAR, as a so as a security, as an orchestration, automation, as a response. We want to see that benefit in IT and in OT. And that, I think, would also as it's speak in favor of the, the unified approach, because we want to have these unified as a processes, um, which give you the end-to-end -end visibility, but they also give you as a, these as a commercial advantages, which are important. Uh, I think what a, an, an element has been touched on, which is certainly a, a challenge as a, we also see, uh, is that the you know, the, the SOC has a role in the overall as a, as a defense and response as a profile. Uh, almost never, I think, will the SOC be the people who decide to stop a machine. You know? That is the responsibility of the OT people. But this means that we have to have a really good communication as a, between the SOC and the, the customer's operating center, for instance, if they have their own operating as a center. And uh, this is something which we've certainly seen in um, thinking of as a particular customers, one who has a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a water utility. Yeah? So they have an operating uh, operational center being supported as a by the SOC, and we need to be able to manage that as a dialogue, uh, which means, and I think uh, one of the speakers said this, I think we, we have a lot of people who are IT competent, so it's very good getting people with the, the OT, the engineering view of the world, yeah? um, and uh, that can help as it improve the customer dialogue. Um, you know, another customer, completely different industry, as a as an um, automotive. You know, so a vehicle sock. How do you get set that up? Uh, interesting sort of question of how we scale socks as well. But again, as I think, there's very clear, to, very important to figure out what roles people as a have. I think one other point I just quickly throw in, uh, which speaks for this unified sock, is very broadly spoken. Um, there, are, there are two kinds of attacks that can hit as an OT environment. One is what we heard a few moments ago, but the low level as a Purdue level one attack, somebody has got the brains to, to go in and manipulate a PLC and the ladder logic. There you definitely need the OT engineering background to understand the overall system. But you can also just get a piece of plain vanilla ransomware, which knows nothing about OT, still making its way into particularly level two, the SCADA systems, or level three, the MES systems, and simply throwing a massive spanner into the works. And there you're going to need the IT folk to help us figure that one out. Yeah, that's, that actually brings to, to, to the other dilemma that I'm all the time kind of kicking my head is, um, in IT, um, eventually a SOC became an advisory um, in a way, it was like um, it would set up playbooks, it would set up procedures, it would monitor procedures, it would be involved in policy. And also in IT, it will be involved in active response and active mitigation, uh, shutting down the machine, blocking the port, uh, spinning up another VM. But what I'm hearing now, and um, I'm not sure if I'm getting this correctly, is we're having a unified SOC, but not with the overall um, responsibilities and ownership of seeing everything um, from end to end. I, he will see the incidents, he will open the case, he will uh, advise on the consequences of this case, but he will not deal with the actual remediation and mitigation. Is that correct, Igal? What do you think about this? Yeah, completely. I think that uh, Jamie said it very clearly the responsibility for stopping uh, an industrial process or even part of it is largely the responsibility of the OT. I think that they they should run on their chain of command to, to approve uh, such thing, but it will come from the OT because they are the only ones who know what is the um, damage that can uh, be uh, created with such uh, uh, 
of you know stopping or, or changing the the, the process uh, it, it could have very huge consequences even much worse than the cyber uh, attack itself so this is something that really needs to be uh, done by the OT people but as again Jamie said they most of the cases they won't be so uh, uh, Chevy on cyber, so they won't know what hits them. So they, they will tell you, okay, it's not working fine. And if it's not working, then we have this and this problem. It's good, 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 gonna cause this and this uh, damage, but they don't know exactly how it's happening. So um, yeah, it's it should be a collaboration of, of people from IT and OT. Uh, I think that the industry 4.0 in, I, I believe in five years from now, maybe, maybe a little bit more, uh, will change the, the, the picture because then the, there'll be a, a direct contact from the IT environment, the IT of the OT environment, down to the last sensor. This is actually the, the true meaning of the Industry 4 revolution. Uh, and then the, 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 the picture will change. So you will have a, a complete vision of the process from top to bottom, from the uh, 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 the top level of uh, the Purdue model down to the, the zero uh, level. And, and then also the incidents will be able to be handled uh, in, in a more collaborative uh, way. But again, doing something on the OT will always involve some engineer that will have to approve it. Uh, Data, have you got any uh, thoughts on this? Yes, uh, there is no one answer. Uh, first of all, it depends on the network. Sometimes it's one network only with uh, some logical different uh, separation. And the OT is uh, minor from the point of view of production. Uh, not always the, the OT is so, uh, uh, let's say, uh, with a lot of engineers. Sometimes it's few, it's, well, let's say a lab. Uh, a lab with uh, uh, blood, blood lab in, in, in uh, in a IT environment. The OT is, is minor, so not always it should be, uh, it cannot manage by the CISO itself, managing the, info, the, the, the attack or the handling the, the attack. But for sure, we should always advise with the engineers, for sure. Or have is the knowledge, enough knowledge to do it by himself. We, can, we have to differ between the, the SOC uh, role to raise the hand to be operational, because many of the ransomware attack, the problem that the, the SOC is silent, is not, uh, is giving the feedback very slow, and then you are on the, with many hours of in the attack, and it's too late. So the role of the SOC is very important to be uh, very active to say there is something, please act, do act. And this is my advice to do. The, the manager of the SOC should be with enough knowledge to give good advice to the CISO and to the managers what to do. Second level is the decision way. And don't forget the, the responsibility of the CEO, responsibility of the, of the board. Not only everything is, is to get today, the ransomware is the, the impact is on the company itself. It can be for five days, one week to 10 days to be shut down. So today it's not like five years ago when the attacks were, were on the IT or production line. Today, the ransomware can be on all the company. So the involvement of the management in the process of when there is an attack should be something that should be involved from the CISO. The CISO should say to the CEO, we are under attack. We, I need your decision. This is my advice. This is my decision. Accept it or do not accept it. We are in a different world. Yes, I'm just I'm just looking here at some of the comments from, uh, from uh, you know, the, the our, uh, how should I say, the guys who are attending this conference. Um, uh, one, you know, and, and some very, you know, very, very relevant comments uh, coming in here. So what I'm understanding cu currently is that a SOC, a unified SOC is more of an advisory body 
to a, another body that is the actual mitigator and incident handler. Um, and the questions here that I'm seeing here is uh, coming in are mainly on um, responsibility of the board and the management. Um, who is exactly taking this responsibility of spanning from IT to OT um, and doing the policies? Um, that's a, I'm, I'm looking here and I'm reading here from one of, from one of our listeners here. Um, I mean, let's start with Jamie. Jamie, I mean, this is a very difficult question, I think, you know, but I'm, I'm throwing it at you currently. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Who, who, uh, who let is the responsible? Other... I mean, uh, how many of the clients or the situations you might have seen uh, in your clients that actually um, there is a central responsibility, ownership of IT to OT, policies, budgets, training, end-to-end, Okay. So the, 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 cl the clients we're working with are, of course, clients who've at some point realized they have to do something about as a uh, as an OT security. And what we typically see is that it is the uh, the CISO coming with an uh, usually an IT background who inherits the problem of dealing with OT. Uh, and so there's a kind of a, there's a high level decision. Okay, we need one person to nail to the wall. And that person is going to need quite a lot of support to be able to conduct his as a job as a properly. Um, so that's as a clearly where you know ourselves and others as a come in and try and sort of roadmap what is a you know a, a, a practical path to getting your arms around as an OT. But we do see uh, this this change happening. But there is a single person that's identified, and very importantly, has been picked up as a buyer, as a, as, a, as a Mr. Fisher, somebody who's then also responsible for the budget, who then has to be able to go back to the board and articulate what needs to be done and why, as a, in business terms, in terms of as a, as a risk to you know to, to, the, to the company, as a, as a to the community, uh, as a not as a, in technical terms. Um, and I think this is where it, I think it's fair to say that the you know the, um, the CIOs of this world are probably most of them on a learning curve. Yeah, yeah, I can see. I can so see. So it's this unified, this unification at a high level, which we've been talking down. You know, we're talking at the SOC level, and this also has to happen at the senior management level. That is a process, and it'll take a little while for us to really get yeah. to the level of maturity we need. So it's not there yet, as, as you see it. It's not there yet. Uh, sinking down at board level, that there has to be. We're talking about unifying technologies, unifying process and procedures, but it's not there yet at board level of unifying budgets and responsibility. Well, as I say, I think the, the responsibility is maybe even being as a, in the customers I'm thinking of, you know, they, they have the one person who is now responsible, but that mm -hmm. person is being confronted of a whole new as a environment and set of problems as a to manage, uh, which they haven't been directly confronted with as a, in the past. And there is a learning process as a going on. And right. I mean, let's face it, our managers need to, to learn and be supported as much as anybody else. And when we talk about industry 4.0, I mean, it's, it's rethinking many elements of how, what, you know, running a business means. And this is obviously one of them. Right. Got, I believe that yeah. I would like to refer that the attack sometimes is, is a life. That means you have three days of attack. The attack is not one virus that enters to the network and, and then you, you handle it. You have a life combat with the organization that is behind this attack. So handling the, the, the this mission, this handling the how to handle the attack, like Nicol Greta said. This is a, a new a, a new training that the CISO should get in the new arena. It should be like uh, somebody in the in the army that know how to handle the army and to deal with the attacks with few attacks at the same time in different ways, but on the old OT and the IT. So the skills of a CISO of today is not only to monitor and to manage and to put the right security, but also you should have the right decision when there is an, a kind of attack. And you should not say, it will not happen to me. You should say, it will happen to me. And let, let, let us prepare to this event and make the preparation in the company to this event that may happen to us. Exactly, that was my, uh, my intention. I, I think that the, the as, as they say in the army, uh, more sweat on training, less blood on the battle. I hope we won't get to a battle, but uh, life is bigger than that. 
Uh, I think that uh, if the IT and OT guys will sit together and create scenarios of incidents and will create some kind of an actionable flow chart of what action should be taken for each of the type of uh, uh, scenarios, uh, I think that this will bring them uh, one step closer to uh, unite uh, their efforts uh, to, to deal with incidents. I think as, 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 a, as a first step, this is the thing that they need to do. Sit together, uh, understand the, 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 the risk, understand the uh, uh, scenarios, uh, um, agree that these scenarios are actually uh, can happen or maybe they, the OT guys will say this can never happen, it's not connected, it doesn't uh, operate this way. Once they found out those things, they can have a set of, of things to do. And then even the, the SOC guys, the responsible for the SOC in some of the scenarios will be able to operate it uh, on their own. They will not need the OT guys because they know, okay, on these scenarios, we just need to take this part of the network, of the grid, and, and we are okay, and we can start to uh, do forensic and understand really what's happened. Um, I think that this is the first part, the first step that they need to do in order to do this convergence of the IT and OT inside. So, yeah, yeah, and that, that, and um, it's the, the middle part of that for a lot of companies is then uh, as getting the process alignment right. Yeah? So we talk about some incident response and incident response processes from an IT perspective, but most companies have, for instance, business continuity plans. They have as a major incident plans for fire or theft or uh, uh, whatever. And these different processes as a need to be as a joined up, um, as a given that the threat can also be, you know, coming from multiple places as a, as a, at the same time. Uh, and the company needs to be able as a, to, as a, to process that in an orderly fashion. I think it's also important to uh, have roles well defined um, so with the SOC, for instance, when there's a real attack as they're going on and the pressure is high on the people, uh, but a lot of a lot is taken off their backs. Yeah? So who is reporting to management? Who is giving the sort of the half hourly update? Try, make sure that the processes are in place to, to free up the, you know, the analysts uh, to do their job as if while somebody else is taking care of putting the big picture together. So sorry, I butted in. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're the panel. I'm just, uh, you know. Uh, Some of the actions have also consequences with the re regulation. I mean, uh, you, you, the guy on the SOC uh, can decide to, to shut down some kind of a part of the process that then it will have a problem with the environment uh, bodies or things like that. that uh, so the, the regulation also has a, 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 a big role in this. Uh, that, you know, you need to understand what your actions uh, might might do, uh, so it's 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 a collaboration. They need to understand really all the possible consequences, all the effects, all the uh, restrictions, and then to devise a, a plan readiness. Absolutely, and the compliance officer and the person who's talking to the you know the, the regulators or whomever uh, has a different skill set to the person who's sitting in the sock. And they need to be, they need to be complementing each other in a manner which I think you were saying this, which has been practiced beforehand. Yeah, so I mean, so preparation, I think, is, a, is, is key. So to, to ensure that the SOC, no matter how good it is in itself, is effective in the total chain uh, of, uh, of incident response across a company. I will, for example, in safety in plants, safety in plants for years are managed by, by, by the manager, the CEO, they are involved. Everything is, uh, there are a lot of drills, a lot of uh, uh, plans, but security and cyber, this is of the last five years in the, plan, in the plans. So we have something to look at, but not look at the safety, what is done in the safety. And try, let us try to, 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 for example, from the training point of view, from the knowledge point of view, we will make in the, in the plans the same that is done in safety. And then we will be in another situation than of today. I mean, what, what I found um, interesting, okay, um, when I talk to engineers, I also, I started out as an engineer many years ago in the, in the 80s. Um, the mentality of an engineer, if it's broken, fix it, make it work, and that's it. We don't, uh, you know, engineers don't usually go into root cause analysis too much, unless it's something that has to do with what they're interested in or they know in their domain. What I'm trying to say is that a cyber attack can happen. 
engineers will fix the problem or think they fix the problem. Um, the process is up again, but the adversary is inside doing some other stuff. Um, I, don't, I don't know, from your experience, do you see engineers um, aware of the um, hazard lights that are flashing when a cyber attack happens? Or they just think, I don't know, I'll kick the machine a little bit uh, to the left and to the right, it will boot up and it will be okay again. Are they aware of the cyber flashlights when somebody is actually starting to play with the system and it's not just a sensor drift, somebody's actually manipulated the values on that sensor? Uh, Igal, could you, do you think you yeah. can? Yeah, yeah, I think that part of the uh, preparedness uh, is, uh, is training, is uh, awareness. And I think that in the last few years, whether they like it or not, uh, engineers are confronted with, with the news, confronted with uh, uh, new uh, cyber attacks uh, on industrial uh, companies and also on just any other company. I mean, it's, it's, today it's not uh, whether you will be attacked, it's only when. And it doesn't matter if you're big, small, industrial, not industrial, it's, it will come to you. It's, it's, it's on its way. It, maybe it's already there, but you didn't notice, but it's, it's there. And, uh, and they cannot ignore it. And I get a lot of requests for on the last year from engineers uh, for cyber uh, training, cyber awareness training. And, and uh, they, underst they, un they now understand. And, and I like it because one, once the engineers understand that there is a problem, they will uh, uh, start working on, on, on solving the problem, uh, at least on what it's on their hands. And, and it's, a good, it's a good shift. It's a, it's a, it's a thing that should be uh, encouraged. And uh, this is, this is the, the, the right way to, to do it. Um, get them to be aware, to understand, and they will fix it. So you get another problem because they want to fix everything by themselves because they're engineers and engineers fix problems. So then you have to explain them that they need specific set of skills to, to deal with it. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, the, the, the awareness is, is, a, is a very important uh, uh, Yeah, from, from, from the audits I used to do a long time ago, then engineers used to fix the problem and open very big cyber holes by fixing the problems. Like they decided they put it to put in Wi-Fi or one of the servers wasn't working. So they took a server from somewhere else and didn't even check the chain of supply of that server but put it in as long as the production is working. Uh, Jamie, have you got some, some uh, demands from your clients? Are you hearing things for more training to engineers to understand the hazard lights or the little blinks of a cyber attack? Yes, I think so. And I think, um, I think it's very good as an IT person to have some sort of humility as a talking as a to, to engineers. I mean, these are people who, who really understand things which IT people as a don't. Uh, I think that, you know, they're, they're, they're a good, as I say, as a mental patterns in, in the heads of, uh, of people, which we should maybe be uh, appealing to or building upon. Um, as the two things I'm thinking of, as, as of the idea of quality. Yeah? I think sort of engineers are really as a, as a quality, as a driven. Uh, and if one can convey as of why cybersecurity is a quality characteristic, both of a production process and of a product being produced, because that probably also have cyber components to it. Uh, when one establishes the idea this is a quality characteristic, uh, but that becomes something which is then translatable as an into the way that as the engineers are, are, are used as a to working and where they can become then extremely productive in uh, you know, turning the requirements into, into real actions. Uh, and the other sort of, if you like, sort of hot button is the, the OEE, so the operational as a, as a you know, efficiency as a, as a view um, of how a plant as a, is functioning. Again, if one can relate as a cyber to how we're uh, maintaining or improving as, as an OEE, I think it becomes a much easier conversation. And there are good reasons why for a long time engineers have said, you know, you, you, you IT guys stay away of your blue screens. <laughs> we're we're talking availability way. here. We're talking life and death. You, you yeah. boys go back to the playroom. Yeah? So we, yeah, exactly. as I say, some humility as well. Mm -hmm. And definitely, but, but we need to, for, for training, yes. Um, and it's, got, it's a two-way conversation. This is, this is learning from both sides of the house. I would like to add that also it's the issue of the generations. Uh, the generation of, age, of engineers, like in, like in life. Uh, there are the, the engineers of 20 years ago that are still in the plant, mm -hmm. and they, they 
the young engineers that are accepting cyber much more easy. So we will see the shift in uh, five to seven years from now, we will see the shift. Yep. I think you can say also 40, 50 years. For... <laughs> yeah, we, we, uh, we deal with the uh, uh, industrial uh, equipment that works for uh, 50 and 60 years and still, still running and still with the, the original engineers, so uh, yes. Yeah, we've got a question here from uh, from one of the listeners here. That's it's very true. I mean, is, is I mean, we're now seeing more and more a demand for automation and uh, remote motor monitoring, um, especially with COVID also coming in and helping the whole process of uh, doing things and uh, and remote and remote access and so on and so forth. Um, so, how how do you see? this new technology and this new culture of work of remote and automation uh, coming in and what, what is the effects of, of you as a CISO that of, of, of uh, to deal with this new trend of working from remote and asking for things to be automated? First of all, you see a lot of, a lot of innovation in the plants. Innovation, they want to be in a better energy, to be in less uh, consumption, uh, so you will see, we see a lot of uh, startups in many plants all over the world that are dealing with uh, innovation. And when they are working with innovation, they want to, to see some of the uh, input from the plant. But how you get back the input to the plant, that's something that you should give a lot of attention. The getting out information, that's easy. That's one way. Getting back the information in order to make automation is something that you have to handle it very carefully because then you break the separation of network totally. So you have to think about it. And there is a way to uh, allow automation. At the end of it, if we like, like we spoke about uh, uh, unified SOC, we have to speak about more and more automation, more and more cloud. And it will happen. So you have to, you don't have to stop it. You just have to design it in a way that it's, it's safe and secured. And this is the uh, way I think that uh, companies like uh, Ical Greta and Jamie, they should come with, with uh, innovation of, of solution, how to interface and how to allow automation. So you're, you're saying that innovation, money, budget, being efficient is the drive, obviously, that we can't stop and it's good that it's happening, but it's driving up the risk. And do you think management is aware of this risk? First of all, it's not a risk. It's a, it's a, let's say it's a challenge and an opportunity. It's not a risk. The benefit you want to, the, the, the plant has to gain more uh, to gain more uh, money or to be more profitable in order to, to do his work. Otherwise, you, it, it will be closed. So uh, innovation is part of the new world. You, you, you should not try to stop it. You, you should allow it. You should, uh, you should protect it. You should uh, find a way to embrace it. And this is your role. Your, your role is to enable it a process of business, how to promote business. Your role is not to stop the business. Your role is to enable it in a secure way. This is the CISO role. And companies like uh, uh, cyber companies and, uh, and, uh, and uh, companies like uh, Egan and Jamie, they should come with solution, how to do it, how to make it happen. And, and this is the role. That's like, like, like always, there are the, the roadmap, and there is a solution, and the solution will come. And there are there already some, some solution. Right, Jamie, um, some... Yeah, I think it's perfectly clear, sort of, you know, sort of innovate or die. Um, I think that we also, as we see the, you know, the, the shape of our economy is a changing and a, a lot more so as a digitally driven as a business models. A challenge, uh, for, for instance, for a lot of manufacturers, uh, particularly those who are sort of suppliers as an as a value chains, is how do they, um, how do they up their game so that they are a qualified player for the, the new 
let's take an example in the in the automobile space yeah uh, an oem like as a tesla if you want to be a supplier to tesla then you have to be a secure and reliable as a supplier otherwise you're not going to be accepted as a, in that space so i think cyber has to be looked at as being something foundational as a to uh, as an innovation rather than in opposition as a to as a to innovation um, that has quite you know, practical aspects to it as well. You know, one of the things which is typical in an OT environment is that people don't have the same tight control of their assets as they do in an IT environment. And so doing something like an asset discovery and is, you know, a, a great first step, first of all, to getting more value out of those assets and digitizing your business model and doing all that greatness. And at the same time, it's the right thing to be doing as a for, as a for cyber. Cyber, I think, can also be as a quite clearly a, an enabler um, of the uh, of the new normal. Uh, so things that we're seeing as accelerated as a by COVID, um, as a more remote working, as a less direct, as a working as a on site. I mean, let's be honest. The model we have today, where a um, a, a component supplier as it goes into a producer's as a factory with his laptop or a USB stick and sticks it into um, the PLC or the SCADA system. I mean, this, this is not good. Yeah? Uh, it wasn't good in the past. And it's, it's bad also, apart from the, you know, the, the, the obvious as a cyber risk, it's bad because it means you've got a person going as a, on site and as a, you know, getting in the way of other people when they're working. Uh, if we can find models, and they, you know, they increasingly exist, to uh, enable remote access but in a controlled fashion so that we've proper as an id and access as a management that we understand who is allowed to do what when where uh, in a controlled fashion then we're increasing the cyber profile compared to the past and we're taking a step as a towards the increase as a productivity which people are looking for yes uh, i think um one more issue and i'll, I'll uh, you know I'll, I'll ask eagle here for I mean, again, I'm looking at what, uh, you know, our participants here in the audience. Um, it's not the innovation so much that um, is the issue. It's, uh, I think um, it's more of um, once um, a new component is brought into the system, um, what is the consequence of dig digesting that component into your system? Is there security by design? Are you aware when you are, um, automating things, um, innovating stuff. What is the process that you see being taken in order to see the cyber uh, um, surface of, of that change, of that new uh, process of this new functionality? Uh, Igal, could you, have you got yeah, any? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. First of all, I would like to add to what uh, JB just said that uh, uh, on top of, of mapping your asset, you need to understand your asset. You need to understand the importance of each asset, and this will allow you then to uh, um, do the enabling st uh, stage of the of cyber enabling the uh, uh, the operational uh, side. Uh, because once you understand what this specific asset is doing, what its importance then you know if you can open it to outside, you can take data from it, um, download and upload data to it, because you know what are the consequences. And this is uh, uh, connecting, uh, connects the dots, connects it all together and then create a, a, a streaming line of uh, thing that you understand uh, uh, what uh, you need to do. Um, if we are uh, talking about uh, how the um, uh, the complete um, uh, plant or the complete uh, operation uh, um, should deal with uh, with uh, uh, cyber uh, incident. Uh, I believe that uh, understanding uh, the um, the attacks, understanding the the, the the scenarios uh, deeply uh, can uh, uh, help with that. I think that uh, um, in, uh, getting the people more uh, involved in, in the process itself, understanding the process, people from, from IT uh, can uh, really help uh, with us and uh, be uh, some kind of a catalyst for people to, to go in and to, to really uh, understand uh, 
the, the, the industrial process and uh, to be able to understand an incident when an incident uh, occurs. Um, okay. Okay. Dato, anything to, to add on this uh, topic? Yes, I would like to add that at the end of it, it's a, a way that the things are designed in the company. If you have a new project, the security and the cyber should be in the first stage uh, involved. Otherwise, you lose the, the war. And the moment this process is designed in the company as a policy, then the, the solution will come. If there is a new uh, product in the plan, in the plant that is taking the energy and take consumption of the energy, and we want to go to the cloud to make some kind of sophistication and make it more efficiency, and then to go, go back to the plant and change something. The moment you are in the design, uh, you are involved, then you can come with solution of one-way connectivity to, to one way to connectivity. You can go to put it in another place and then get it to the, York, to the first place. There are a lot of solutions but the moment you are in the design and not afterwards when you hear about it, that there is a new, uh, this, a new process in the plan that was already uh, in place. So it's kind of a policy. The moment the policy is good, then you are safe. Yeah, I, I wish more, more would adopt that, uh, that kind of uh, mindset of uh, having a policy, not a just, you know, and then applying the policy. But that's uh, unfortunately a long process until um, any company would understand the importance of uh, having cyber policies as part of the BCP. Uh, anyway, I'd, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for joining this panel. Our time is up. Uh, for me, it was very interesting. Thank you very, very much. And uh, I hope uh, we'll uh, talk all soon and uh, discuss some more issues in, in the near future. So thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Igal. Thank you, Adeto. And uh, speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Okay. Have a nice evening. Bye. Okay, you too. Bye-bye.